Thank you, Valentina. Um, uh, thank you, CMX and Bevy, for having us. We're really excited to be here. Uh, give me a minute and I'm going to share my screen and we will dive right in. So um, as we are beginning, um, my name is Jesse. I'm here with Liz. Um, as Valentina mentioned, Liz is our Senior Manager of Community Building and Digital Engagement at Sabin Vaccine Institute. And today we are really going to be talking about the Boost community and all of the good that Boost has been doing globally. So um, we really, because it's the end of the day for those of us on the East Coast and we wanna be really mindful of time, we're just gonna dive right in. So first and foremost, Liz, thank you so much for being here with us. Um, so first question is, why did you or why did Sabin create Boost and who does it serve? Great. Thank you, Jesse. Nice to be here with everyone. Um, so over the past decade, the immunization landscape is increasingly complex. Um, we've seen an increase in vaccine hesitancy, violence against health workers, and ongoing global health system delivery barriers. So all of these challenges have a great impact on immunization professionals. Um, and when I say immunization professionals, I'm referring to individuals who manage or carry out vaccination programs in their respective communities. Um, so as a result of all these challenges, there has been burnout and fatigue uh, leading to staff turnover and increasing isolation from colleagues, um, especially those working at the subnational or local level um, and those working at the national level within countries. Um, so a team at the Sabin Vaccine Institute identified some of these needs and raised them to its donors in order to obtain the resources uh, needed to develop and support a community of immunization professionals around the world. So to form this new community, uh, which would live both online and offline, uh, Sabin consulted a number of immunization professionals through global surveys um, and focus groups in East Africa to really better understand some of the challenges they were facing um, and the solutions that they hoped to see. Um, so then enter the Boost community, um, again, first existing as an online platform, boostcommunity.org. Uh, we launched in early 2020 uh, to better support immunization professionals by equipping them with the essential connections uh, to peers and key stakeholders um, and resources required to strengthen their capacity, advance careers, and really lead in challenging situations. Thank you. So the obvious question then is, how did COVID change the online platform use? Yeah, so we get this question a lot. Um, so really, perhaps nothing has been more disruptive than the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, which I'm sure is affecting everyone. Um, it's really driven a, an immediate urgent need for our community of immunization professionals to increase global collaboration um, to continue essential routine immunization services, um, as well as address some emerging issues, um, such as vaccine misinformation and rolling out new COVID-19 vaccines. Um, in fact, we saw continuous membership growth in the last year and a half as our members were eager to connect with others and get timely inf information. Um, fortunately, we've also been able to rapidly disseminate new information, events, and resources through our active platform community feed, uh, events calendar. Um, as the situation seems to change on a daily basis during the pandemic, we really have relied heavily on these channels. Um, and I think it's important to note here that our online platform was developed before COVID-19 shook the world, which allowed us to be more responsive as the pandemic unfolded. So our members had already started adjusting to online space, um, including networking with other members through our platform's community feed and direct messaging space, um, and also attending virtual events. Um, and I think this really allowed for an easier transition to more virtual events and activities. Yeah, definitely. So with all this in mind, then how do you define and measure success for your community and your members? Sure. So we define and measure success for our community um, in a number of ways. Uh, so that first layer of measurement is around the size and demographics of our community. Um, so, for example, we track the number of individuals who sign up for Boost, uh, which is free of charge to, to make an account, um, and also complete their profile. And this allows um, our members to be visible to each other on the platform. So, to date, we have nearly 1,700 activated profiles on the Boost platform. And you can see that from the map here, uh, a, a pretty uh, great geographic distribution as well. 
Um, and since we are a global com community, it is important that we represent a wide range of countries. Um, we find that this allows for peer-to-peer -peer connections across borders, as well as sharing of um, diverse perspectives and experiences. So um, moreover, we're keenly focused on reaching immunization professionals at the subnational level in countries. And I mentioned this before, and for those that are unfamiliar with this term, uh, subnational indicates indiv individuals working at a local, district, or regional level. So many trainings and support um, have not reached this these levels of the system, uh, I think primarily due to inadequate resources, uh, limited connectivity, um, and in some cases, complicated existing government structures. So currently, we have about 36% of our membership who are individuals working at the national and subnational levels of government. And then that remaining percentage of members represent implementing non-governmental organization partners, um, some of whom carry out the majority of immunization services in their countries. Also have multinational organizations like the World Health Organization, um, and then smaller slices of our membership rec uh, represent academia, the private sector, um, including consultants. It's an impressive list. Um, and so, what about platform engagement metrics? What are some of the numbers that you track? So, besides community growth, uh, we strive for high community engagement metrics. Um, so, typically, we measure this. Uh, by the number of members who have logged into their account at least once in the last 30 days. Um, we also look at how many individuals, both members and non-members, are joining us for our live engagements, um, other better known as webinars, but we like to use the term live engagements, um, advertised through our online platform and hosted on, on Zoom. So from January 2020, when we launched, um, until uh, July of 2021, so the middle of this year, did 110 um, uh, virtual events, including webinars, virtual workshops, trainings, and courses. Um, and we had nearly 4,000 total registrants and 250 members receiving certificates of completion uh, for one of uh, the six courses that we offered throughout that time period. And I think perhaps more important than the breadth of our community and its offerings is the quality of our programming and how it's actually being utilized by our members. So our core programs focus on strengthening the learning and management capacities of our members. Um, we use a carefully crafted uh, monitoring, evaluation, and learning framework to de uh, determine our success around our courses and trainings, which usually involves a regular post-event surveys um, and community-focused groups to provide ongoing feedback on our programming um, to really ensure that it is best tailored for our community. Um, so from our post-event surveys, we found that on average, about 90% of our Boost virtual engagement participants would recommend um, the opportunity uh, to their colleague, uh, which for us uh, is a testament to some of the offerings that we deliver and just the, the need for more um, in the community. Yeah, and you know, I just want to reiterate the the numbers that you mentioned because being that we are on a virtual event right now, it's sometimes hard to fathom that over the course of uh, you know almost a year, over a year for Sabin, 110 online live events with nearly 4,000 total registrants. Like that's kudos to you and to your team, right? Not just for using a tool well, but understanding the need of your end users, right? And that's such a crucial piece of managing an online community and an online platform. So I did just I wanted to to amplify those numbers because that's that's those are impressive numbers in any sort of situation when you're looking at events and attendance and engagement. Um, so the next question then would be how how do you continue to provide value for your members? So how do you further equip them to lead um, and how do you encourage them to participate in the community? Yeah, thanks for that question. Um, so I think I mentioned a little bit earlier um, that Boost was originally envisioned as a hybrid in-person community. Oh, sorry, can you still hear me okay? I can hear you, your camera hopped off, but we can hear you. Okay, sorry about that. I'll try to get back online as I continue. Um, so as I mentioned before, Boost was originally envisioned as a, both an in-person and online community. Um, however, due to the pandemic, we've 
developed and really ramped up our virtual offerings, um, as I just described, uh, including our online courses on key topics such as community activation and adaptive leadership. Um, so these topics have formed a foundational capacity building base that has been beneficial in helping our members deal with complex issues that might not have an easy answer or solution, um, especially given today's current context. Uh, we also offer periodic trainings on technical immunization topics, such as supply chain and supportive supervision, uh, which have practical implications to the day-to-day -day work of our members. Um, and in these of practice around these various um, specific topics uh, come together in dedicated learning groups hosted on the Boost platform, uh, which are moderated by my team, um, along uh, with uh, seasoned immunization experts from our network. Um, and we really see this as a safe space, which allows for our members to raise important questions, uh, share their experiences with fellow co cohort members. Um, and then also our live engagement recordings and resources can be stored in these groups, which lets our members access them on their own time, which as we all know is important when schedules are tight, um, especially in the immunization professional community that has um, had a lot of changes in the last year and a half and so. That is the understatement of the century. Uh, yes. So um, can you give us some examples then of how Sabin is leveraging the community to drive these real world impacts? Sure. So in the early days of the pandemic, um, many routine immunization services um, halted and this goes kind of around the world. Um, obviously some countries had more of an impact at the beginning, but we really saw across the board in um, the countries that are represented on our platform that there were a lot of disruptions to services. Um, so these communities, as well as the global partners um, who were helping to support some of these communities needed to quickly identify what were the barriers in order to quickly and safely resume these services. Um, so during this critical time, uh, many external partners, such as the World Health Organization, um, look to partners like the Boost community to get a pulse on what was actually happening on the ground. So due to the diverse and expansive community of immunization professionals we had built, um, we were able to kind of help out. Um, and while many of these partners like WHO had significant presence on the ground, it was, it was difficult to get some of this real-time information um, from various country networks. So the Boost team provided an avenue of dissemination uh, for a global survey through our online platform to our immunization professional community um, to better understand the conditions in their respective countries. Um, so we found that there were a number of issues from limited transportation uh, to caregivers' fear of contracting COVID-19 that were preventing people from seeking out some of these health services. Um, moreover, there were questions from health workers around new global um, and country protocols that were being released to help protect themselves and their communities. So the Boost team again responded by organizing an information session, which we hosted on Zoom, um, that was co-hosted by WHO on new infection prevention and control guidelines for immunization professionals. Um, we had over 500 individuals participate in the session alone, um, which really demonstrated the need for these types of forums. Um, so this feedback loop, which is kind of displayed on the screen here, of surfacing concerns um, as well as best practices from our members to partners that are aiming to provide support to this community, and then also translating major global health decisions from the top into kind of what that looks like on the ground. Um, this feedback loop has been really instrumental during the time this time period. Um, we've also been able to expand some of our partnerships and subsequent offerings as a direct result of um, so, for example, earlier this year in April, Boost launched its COVID-19 listening and learning series. Um, it's a monthly virtual and uh, also now a podcast series um, where we highlight um, what has worked and well and what hasn't worked in the rollout of COVID-19 vaccines. Um, so we hope that these learnings will inform our members who are in the midst of planning for their own COVID-19 vaccine rollout. Um, and, you know, it's it's really a testament to not just Sabin as a organization, you know, but clearly the community that you have been you have been managing on Boost that the WHO, you know, kind of pinpointed, oh, you are you are a valuable partner and resource and you can get the information where it needs to go. 
and you have this tool, the, the online boost community um, hosted by Hype, right? Uh, that, you know, enabled you to do that. And it's it's truly impressive the work that Sabin has been able to do. Um, can you give us another example of kind of how you're seeing these other real world implications? Yeah, sure. Um, and I'll just also add to your comment. I mean, I don't think this information could come fast enough. Um, I think everyone is really eager, especially there were so many unknowns coming out with COVID and especially in the immunization community. So um, it really has been like all, all hands on deck, all partners kind of involved in trying to get this information out. Um, so I guess as far as some other examples go, um, the Boost team recently co-hosted a four-part virtual training series um, with one of our implementing immunization partners, uh, John Snow Incorporated, on their reaching every district through quality improvement tools, uh, better known as Red QI approach. So this is obviously a very technical training, um, which was uh, originally envisioned as an in-person workshop. Um, so maybe potentially attracting like 30 to 50 people from a specific region. Um, but obviously due to the pandemic, it was shifted online as most events are, including this one. Um, so we assumed the demand would maybe be about the same. Um, we weren't really sure what we were going to get. Um, but to our surprise, we had nearly 450 people register for the series. Um, and over 200 individuals attended the weekly sessions. Um, and these were folks that were coming from I think probably 15 or 20 different countries. So much greater kind of uh, reach than we had um, expected. Um, and I would also say that this kind of 50% show rate is not bad considering the amount of uh, Zoom fatigue that exists these days. And then I think what was even more <laughs> impressive from my perspective was just the level of engagement of participants. Um, so we purposely set up uh, the training as a Zoom meeting where participants could easily share their thoughts and questions in the chat box uh, raise their hand to speak and turn on their videos. Um, I think some hosts kind of fear giving these types of permissions to such a large group, um, which can be a little scary. Um, but having chat moderators and co-hosts kind of monitoring the room, um, this can be really a successful approach. And then I would also say the training facilitators definitely did their part by incorporating interactive polls, word clouds, um, and discussion questions throughout the session. Um, and then we also uh, continue the conversations, kind of post these live uh, training sessions through the Boost um, online groups, uh, learning groups that I mentioned before. Um, and this is where participants were really able to continue to share their experiences um, and also post kind of any follow up questions that they had to training facilitators um, and peers in that group. Yeah, and so it sounds like the the connections are truly the impressive thing. So can you actually can you speak more about those connections of peers and facilitators and, and moderators and what that looks like? Sure. So in addition to some of the connections our peers and between our members um, and course facilitators, which largely happens in these learning groups and throughout uh, courses and trainings. Uh, we also provide um, opportunities for our members to speak on global panels and engage in key stakeholder conversations. Um, and these are really the conversations that are shaping the fields of immunization. Um, and I think this visibility is really important as the voices of our members are often left out of key funding and strategic decisions. Um, fit of connecting with the community that exists online is that you don't have to pay necessarily for um, ex expensive flights or hotel accommodations, let's say in Geneva where WHO's headquarters are based. Um, you don't have to do any of that to really get your seat at the table. You just need to find a stable internet connection. Um, so we've had members that have joined from Nigeria, Cameroon, um, a number of other countries that have been on global panels with the head of um, UNICEF, WHO. Remarkable that, you know, it took a pandemic to get to the stage, um, but I'm excited that, you know, hopefully this pandemic can actually accelerate and norma uh, normalize this type of participation moving forward. Definitely. Yeah, there's there's been quite the paradigm shift for sure. Um, and so how have um, other parts of the Sabin organization also been leveraging this community? Yeah, so the Boost team often collaborates with other Sabin teams, um, especially those that are hosting similar communities of practice. Um, so for an example, um, Sabin also hosts a network called Immunization Advocates, 
which is a global network of healthcare professionals who provide expertise to local journalists on the ground to get them really accurate information about um, vaccinations. Um, and especially in this age of um, vaccine misinformation, it's important to have accurate information. Um, so we've actually been able to identify some members from our Boost community to serve as experts for this, um, this other network. Uh, and then we also, in general, just uh, disseminate Thaben news via our Boost community platform. Um, as, so we're kind of another communications channel for the team and organization at large. Uh, and what does the future of Boost Community look like? So hopefully we'll see our community to continue to grow in the coming months and years. Um, ultimately, we see our community of immunization professionals really led by immunization professionals um, rather than Sabin or just one organization. And I think what's been really exciting is that we've already started to see this transition uh, happen in the community. So for the courses and live engagements that we've been offering this fall, we're inviting and also um, hiring members of the community. Um, so those have, who have completed a number of our courses and advanced trainings, um, we're inviting these folks to actually facilitate these programs. We envision expanding this opportunity moving forward as our team and the community grows. Um, and maybe an, a specific example is our recently launched intensive fellowship program. We like to call it the trainer, the trainer program with the goal of equipping our members with facilitation skills to lead future trainings on the Boost Community platform and hopefully within their own communities as well. So these individuals have worked with each other since uh, actually the beginning of May um, to not only hone their community activation skills, uh, which is the main topic of this training, um, but they've also built a very strong relationship with each other. Um, and I think this growing trust alongside uh, values of ownership, um, encouragement, rigor, and curiosity are deeply ingrained in our community um, and have allowed for increased collaboration and more meaningful connections among our members, um, even in the virtual space that we live in these days. Yeah, and so it's it's clear that you know you've created this really excellent sort of feedback loop, as you had mentioned before, right? Of you bring people on for the various reasons that they'll come to Boost Community, they learn, they train, and then they can literally give back to the Boost Community as well as their local community on the ground with the information and the trainings that you have provided. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, so we're almost at time and we've we finished our little slide presentation um, and I just wanted to uh, take a moment if we had any some any Q&A questions. I'm just going to check the chat. Um, Liz, thank you so much for that incredibly informative and well thought out uh, kind of, you know, explanation and understanding about Sabin and Boost. So let's just pop over to Q&A for a minute. Um, so we have a question here. How do Sabin and Boost strategize signing up and engaging new members in new countries or regions that you haven't been there yet? Yeah, sure. I can definitely answer that. And maybe before answering it, I'll also say um, it's also great to find an awesome technological partner like iBright to help kind of implement some of the, the dreams that we have as a, as a nonprofit organization. And I think um, it, like I said before, it's been amazing to reach so many people that, you know, oftentimes, you know, programs can't just because they don't have maybe boots on the ground. Um, but obviously in this space, you can make that happen. Um, but yeah, as far as engaging kind of more countries and folks that are outside of our current network, um, we definitely lean into our, um, we call it, like to call them our boost community champions. So the folks that I had um, kind of recognized for doing a number of courses and trainings and being real advocates of the community. Um, we definitely look to them to help spread their word uh, amongst their own colleagues and networks as well. And we've actually seen a lot of uh, new Boost members come from that kind of friend of friend approach. And then I'd also say we work, um, as I mentioned before, with a lot of implementing partners. So folks that might have offices in other countries like JSI, um, and then I think through those networks as well, we're able to help kind of spread the word further about um, the Boost community. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I'll give it another minute if there's any other Q and A's. Um, if nothing else, I mean, just to kind of, you know, sum up or recap, it's, it's you know, a multi-pronged approach, right? You, you found a good tool and then you actually have to know how to use the tool. And then you also need to have the buy-in and you have to have 
the purpose, right? And the drive to do that. And, and clearly with Sabin and Boost and the timely matter of vaccinations, uh, you know, that things kind of gelled together very quickly and clearly, which is not always the case, but it's kind of the best outcome that we could hope for of these kinds of either a quick pivot to an online community or otherwise. Um, so again, big kudos to to you as managing this online community and uh, and to Boost and Sabin for really, you know, understanding the the need and the timeliness of the work that you were doing. So thank you so much. Um, is there any other thing that you would like to say before we end so that we can give people back a few more minutes of their days? I think I'm good. Just thanks so much for this opportunity. Um, like I said, it's been great working with Hive, seeing our community blossom and really looking forward to what the future brings. Definitely, us too. Um, thank you all for attending. Thank you so much, um, Valentina. Hi, thank you so much to both of you. Um, everyone that's watching, please give a big round of applause in the chat. Um, it's not easy being the last session of the day on a particular stage and you just, you know, rocked it. So thank you both. And yeah, if anyone wants to get in touch with either of you, how can they do that? Where's the best places? I can start off. Um, so definitely go to boostcommunity.org if you're interested in learning more. Um, we do actually check our, our general inbox on a regular basis. So if you have any questions about us or community, be happy to answer them there. Perfect. Definitely. And, uh, you know, for Hivebrite, um, you can check out our website, hivebrite.com. You can find me on LinkedIn. I believe I, as part of my profile on the CMX thing, I've given you my LinkedIn. So mm -hmm. hopefully you can find that. But um, would love to be in touch if you have more questions about Hivebrite, community engagement, anything like that. Um, so. Happy to hear from anyone. Thank you. Well, that's it for this session on this stage, um, but don't go anywhere because coming up on the main stage is a very special fireside chat between David Spinks and Seth Godin. And then after that, drag queen bingo, live from Madrid. And I'm actually in Madrid, um, but I don't know where it's happening in Madrid. So if you're up for it, I've actually been to this show in person last year, and it's a lot of fun. Um, even if you don't participate, just sitting there watching. So lots of things coming your way. Thank you very much, Jesse and Elizabeth. And uh, yeah, I will see you over in the fireside chat on the main stage. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank all. you. Bye now.